A conspiracy? You might be playing a role in amplifying disinformation, misinformation, or conspiracy theories. In this video, I'll share why it's important to think about this, and more importantly, take action. And I'm gonna share some tips on what you can do to play your part in stopping the spread of the COVID-19 infodemic, and actually any other conspiracy theory you come across. So, disinformation, misinformation, and conspiracy theories. They're all subtly different, but they have a common theme. They're all untrue information that compete for space with verified facts, meaning that often what we need to do to stay healthy and well or make good decisions can get lost in the noise of information that we're trying to process. And the bad news is, is that whether this is caused through mistakenly sharing it or by people actively spreading it and recruiting others to do it too, it can seriously affect our way of life, our democracy, our our health and our economies and it's been spreading fast what's going on here well it seems our need for structure and our pattern recognition skill can be rather overactive causing a tendency to spot patterns like clouds that look like dogs and vaccines causing autism when in fact there are no such patterns the ability to see patterns was probably a useful survival trait for our ancestors better to mistakenly spot signs of a predator than to overlook a hungry one but put the same tendency in our information rich world and we see non-existent links between cause and effect conspiracy theories all over the place the conspiracy continues one reason why we're so keen to believe in conspiracy theories is that we're social animals and our status in that society is much more important from an evolutionary standpoint than being right so we constantly compare our actions and beliefs to those of our peers and then alter them to fit in that means if our social group believes something we're more likely to follow that herd the conspiracy man and this principle applies powerfully to ideas if more people believe a piece of information then we're more likely to accept it as true and so if via our social group through social media or in real life, we're overly exposed to a particular idea, then it becomes embedded in our worldview. That's how conspiracy works. In short, social proof is a much more effective persuasion technique than purely evidence-based proof, which is of course why this sort of proof is so popular in advertising. That's why in tests, eight out of 10 owners who expressed a preference said their cats preferred it. Another trap that causes us to overlook information is confirmation bias. The tendency for people to seek out and believe the data that supports their views while discounting the stuff that doesn't. We all suffer from this. Just think back to the last time you heard a debate on the radio or TV. How convincing did you find the argument that ran counter to your view compared to the one that agreed with it? The chances are, whatever the rationality of either side, you largely dismissed the opposition arguments while applauding those who agreed with you. Confirmation bias also shows itself as a tendency to select information from sources that already agree with our views, which probably comes from the social group that we relate to. Conspiracy. So what should you do to reduce the spread of misinformation or outright disinformation on the internet through your own social media use? Here's three things to try. First, only share information you know is factually accurate. Research tells us quite clearly that even if you consider yourself the smartest of people, you can easily be fooled by fake claims because of something called cognitive miserliness. Now what's that? Essentially, it's the brain's tendency to seek solutions to problems that take the least mental effort. We don't want to think and we avoid it at all cost. We have all formed habits that enable us to virtually bypass the thinking process. We've hardwired our brains to take shortcuts. For many adults, this non-thinking aspect runs on autopilot as though the brain knows no other way. So you actively have to guard against this. Conspiracy theories. And the best way to do that is to make sure you're only sharing information from official sources, not obscure things from Twitter, Reddit, or a Facebook post your friend says they heard from their sister who works in a place where they know a guy who said they saw someone doing something they should not have done. And it's because of this thing, we've suddenly got a massive outbreak of COVID-19 that's being hushed up, and you heard it here first, that kind of thing. Just 
don't share it. Because you shouldn't underestimate the power of the social media algorithms to viralize posts that aren't true, but produce clicks. Unfortunately, the algorithms tend not to care whether the thing you're posting is true or not. And if you're sharing it, then you're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. Second, if you do engage and try to debunk a false claim, then try not to get too emotional about it because people who disagree with you will be much more likely to share the information that you're trying to debunk. And so the spiral continues. Work by Jay Van Bavel shows that by using moderate language rather than polarizing language, then that most likely increases how far your debunking message travels to the people who need to hear it rather than just bouncing around your own bubble or echo chamber of people who already agree with you. And to make matters worse, presenting corrective information to a group with firmly held beliefs can actually strengthen their view despite the new information undermining it. New evidence creates inconsistencies in our beliefs and an associated emotional discomfort. But instead of modifying our belief, we tend to self-justify and we have even stronger dislike of opposing theories, which can make us even more entrenched in our views. Government conspiracy against me! This has become known as the boomerang effect, and it is a huge problem when trying to nudge people towards better behavior. Now, to avoid this backfire or boomerang effect, ignore the myths. Don't even mention or acknowledge them just make the key points. So for example, vaccines are safe and reduce the chances of getting flu by between 50 and 60%. Full stop. Don't mention the misconceptions as they're actually better remembered. As time passes, you forget the context in which you heard the myth, in this case, during a debunking, and you're left with just the memory of the myth itself. And that's why it's so dangerous to keep mentioning it. So don't post information for the likes. Look beyond that and moderate your language if you're really trying to address the problem. And don't mention the conspiracy if you can avoid it. Third, if you get into an active disagreement with someone sharing a conspiracy theory, rather than just presenting facts, try to ask questions instead. Ask them to explain how their elaborate conspiracy works rather than why they believe it. The reason why this approach is important is because experiments show that focusing on explaining how the conspiracy works tends to bring home the fact that they don't understand the details of the issue as well as they think they do. This is called the illusion of explanatory depth. And once you shine a light on how shallow the conspiracy theory actually is, then this seems to be more useful in prompting them to question their beliefs rather than countering them with facts alone. Now, the biggest power lies in pre-bunking rather than debunking. That's preemptively warning people about the strategies that people are using to speed up conspiracy theories. And it's important that we get ahead of this because as sure as eggs are eggs, there will be an explosion of conspiracy theories about the safety and effectiveness of a COVID-19 vaccine if and when that emerges. Check out the bad news game online for more about this. I'll leave a link in the description here. It's been proven to be particularly effective because it simulates sites like Twitter, allowing you to build your follower base by applying misinformation techniques like impersonating or delegitimizing official accounts by attacking them in different ways, making polarizing comments designed to create partisan divides or through creating complete conspiracy theories. By understanding the techniques used like mocking, falsifying, exaggerating, manipulating, frightening, denying and outright lying, it appears to help to insulate people against the effects of disinformation when they encounter it in their real lives. They see through what's going on. It's actually a super interesting site and will help you to get some insight into how to protect yourself and others from disinformation out there. You're not going to stop everyone out there spreading misinformation. But like a real virus, the survival of misinformation depends on its R or reproductive number. If we can get enough people not to pass the misinformation virus on, then we might be able to reduce its spread and at least get it under control, even if we can't completely eliminate it. Now, this isn't all you can do, but I hope it gets you started. I'm Dr. Saab Johal. You might enjoy this video next, Take care and go well. And please be part of the solution. We all really need you right now.